All right, YouTube. I want to start this video off by just giving you a little bit of motivation that was just on my mind a minute ago. Um, you are not perfect. Understand that. Neither am I. Understand that. Where am I going with this? The fact that you are not perfect, you're not going to hit the ground running and have a perfect diet and exercise regimen just because New Year's come around. All right. If you start early, you can work through some of those problems. All right. You will have a better start. By the time New Year's come around, you will already be in a better place with your workout and with your diet. You can work through some of your mistakes. And no, you're still not going to be perfect. You're just going to be way better off. I am way better off. I got results because I am way better off than when I was a beginner, when I didn't know. It was way better off when I was in the guessing stage, than when I was in the guessing stage, all right? I was, I'm way better off than when I had bad form or didn't know how to correctly um, execute the, the exercises that I chose to do. I'm way better off because I work through the mistakes, all right? I gave myself time. I always tell people, give yourself six months. Give yourself six months, all right? And within six months' time, Instead of six days, you know, a lot of people try to rush things. A lot of people want their results yesterday. You know what I'm saying? They think that, okay, New Year's come around, then I'm going to get, I'm going to lose all my body weight in January. No, it's not going to happen. That's why most people give up on their New Year's resolution before February, all right? I've been in the gym for years, and I've seen it. I've seen it plenty of times. It's, it's hard. I don't really pay attention to people in the gym that much. I try not to. I'm in there solo, dolo, working on me. But when something is so obvious, um, it's hard not to see it, even though I'm not trying to. Um, New Year's is super obvious. There's a million people who join the gym. You see new faces, new people, new this, new that, uh, new beginners. And they're in there pushing hard as they possibly can. They're in there pushing harder than the people that have been in there. You know? Not correctly, though. That's the bad part. That, that's dangerous. You know, you're pushing hard, but you're not doing the workouts correctly. You need to learn how to do the workouts correctly. Baby steps, you know? But uh, they burn themselves out. Those same people, you don't see them. And you might see some of them in February. Maybe a sprinkle of them in March. Then after that, you don't see those people anymore. Mid-March, they're done. The majority of them. Because you're biting off more than you can chew. You're setting yourself up for failure, all right? A lot of people are waiting and they're, they, they have all these plans, but they're putting it off. And they're going to continue to put it off. And then the other half of the people are going to actually go to the gym. I'm not saying everybody's going to fail. I'm just talking about what I normally see. This is statistically facts, all right? Um, people usually do not stick to their New Year's resolutions, all right? Because I tell people, man, New Year's is not a mag magical day. It's not a magical day. Think of your New Year's resolution. Let let's say it's not fitness. Let's say you want to stop smoking. So you're going to keep smoking cigarettes until New Year's. And you go all of, all of you know, you go cold turkey, stop smoking. Now, I'm not saying you can't cold turkey stop smoking. I did it myself. But it wasn't on New Year's. It was just like, you know, I was like, man, I'm smoking. Every time I, uh, and I don't like to talk about stuff like this. But I, I, I'm smoking every time I do anything. I can't use the bathroom without smoking. I can't walk down the street without smoking. I can't do nothing without smoking. I can't eat without smoking afterwards. You know, two packs a day type stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, um... I was like, man, I gotta stop this. And I stopped cold turkey because I stopped it when I was when I realized I needed to stop. I didn't give myself a date like later on. Like, no, I'm gonna stop it on on. I forget where. I'm, I'm thinking it was the summer. I don't remember. This is like I was like 19, and uh, 
so I'm 29, I'm, I'm 39, god dang, I wish, that's took 10, yeah, nah, but nah, older is wiser, so I'm cool with 39, but that was 20 years ago, bro, so that's whoever watching me, um, 20 years ago, quick cold turkey, because I didn't put it off, and I knew this at 19, you know what I'm saying, at 19, 20 years ago, so, I've always been goal-orientated, goal-minded, even before I got into fitness. Um, I'm just trying to spread it with the world right now, you know? Um, so, let's go ahead and talk about what I'm really here to talk about. I'm just going to talk about what I'm doing today. Um, I started my diet, my cut, um, a few days ago. Um, was it Monday? So this is Wednesday. No, this is Thursday. So I started it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So this is three days ago. Um, started my cut a few days ago. And I'm going to tell you what I did today so far. All right. I did night shift. So I woke up late in the, in the midday. Um, I count everything as when you count your calories, um, count them as soon as you eat when you wake up when you wake up the first thing you eat whether you fast not fast whatever you want to do start counting the first thing you eat to the last thing you eat before bed count everything you know a lot of people think that's hard to do but no it makes things much easier it simplifies things all right it's not that hard i ate about six seven hundred calories today and I don't even know the exact number, six or seven hundred, right? And I don't even know the exact number, but I'm gonna get results. Why? Because when I get off this video, I'm gonna make sure I figure out exactly what I ate. I know what I ate, all right? So um, that sounds so bad. I don't care. I'm not editing none now. I'm giving you the real, raw, authentic, all right? So six or seven hundred calories when I first wake up. Six or seven hundred calories doesn't sound like a lot of food. It's not gonna fill up most people. Depends on what you're eating. It depends on what you're eating. Um, the majority of my volume of my meal was mixed veggies. Why? Mixed veggies are very low in calories. All right. Um, I just started my diet, so I don't even remember all the calories. I think 20, 20 calories, 20 calories for a cup, something like that. I forget. Last year I knew everything because I was dialed in more. Um, why did I forget? Because I wasn't tracking my shit the same when I got off my diet. When I got off my diet, I gave myself a rough rough, uh, rough estimate of 3,000 calories a day. Uh, right now, I'm trying to do like 26 calories a day, 2,600 calories a day. Um, so you reach that number and you stop. You reach that number that you're shooting for and you stop. Don't go over your number, all right? If you say you're going to eat, find out what how many calories you need to eat first. Don't just tell yourself how many calories you need to eat. You need to find them out. That's what finding your maintenance calories is about. I got videos where I explain my ways of finding your maintenance calories. But if you want a quick, uh, rough estimate right now, I tell people, man, just find out what you, find out what you usually eat, find out the calorie amounts, and cut it slightly. That's it got people that argue that method but people that usually argue that method are people who usually are not even trying to diet they just want to um contradict you know you're going to have a lot of people that's another thing i want to throw in real quick um when you start getting lean and you start getting results you're going to have a lot of people hating on you it, and it is what it is people gonna say that ain't how it is trust me i know firsthand you're going to have people who are going to try to puppeteer you people that's going to try to tell you how to do whatever you got you're going to have all kinds of people come your way and, and, and try to stop your shine or try to control your shine like everybody ain't your coach all right understand that every if you let everybody be your coach i see this happen a lot of times you let everybody be your coach it's going to hinder your progress and if you let everybody be your coach when it comes to lifting weights you're going to probably get injured all right I've seen it like I said I've been around the gym everything that I'm saying I've been in the gym for years so everything that I'm saying I'm speaking of things I've been through or things I've seen 
in a high amount of numbers, all right? So, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm about to go pick up my kids from their grandma house. That ain't part of the diet. But I'm just telling you what I'm about to do. I'm going to pick up my kids from, from their grandma house. I'm going to come home, um, play, play the video game, do all kinds of stuff. I'm not going to go home and eat. I'm full. I ate a volume type meal. What did I eat? Matter of fact, I didn't tell y'all what I ate. I ate um, mixed veggies for my base, right? The lowest calorie thing, you want that to be your base. You know, make sure it's nutritious, delicious. You know what I'm saying? Things like that. Uh, fruits and veggies um, are usually low in calories. You got high calorie veggies and fruits. Um, bananas, for one, to be high calorie. Um, bananas are usually give or take 100 calories per banana, depending on the size of the banana. And um, fruits and veggies, uh, I do mixed veggies, I do spinach, things like that. That's usually my volume when I, uh, use a, when I do a meal. Um, a lean protein, I usually do like fish, um, low cuts of beef, low, um, low fat cuts of beef, uh, you know, 90% lean ground beef, things like that, um, chicken breast, um, shoot, all kinds of stuff, right, so fish, chicken breast, eggs, um, what I'm, I taper with my eggs, I like full eggs, I like whole eggs, but as I get leaner and leaner, I'm have to cut my calories more and more, I start going with egg whites and things like that, um, or you can do egg beaters or egg substitute. Just compare the calories. Compare the calories to egg whites and regular eggs. Now, yes, mind you, you're 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 losing the healthy fats from the eggs and things like that. So it's a sacrifice. But at the end of the day, long as you're getting enough healthy fat in a day, you don't have to eat. You don't have to overeat fat because a lot of people are gonna say things about hormones and things like that. Just just get enough you don't have to do too much because you got to think about fat one thing you got to think about fat fat has nine calories per gram everything that has fat in it has higher calories than things that don't a lot of people want to cut their carbs carbs are only four calories per gram protein is also four calories per gram alcohol sugar alcohol is like seven calories per gram uh, fiber uh, three to five calories per gram, whether it's soluble or non-soluble. You see what I'm saying? You got to know your numbers, all right? And that's what I teach over here. Not in this video. I'm just telling you what I'm doing right now, but I have multiple videos. Just type in Rapid Time Fitness Calories. Rapid Time Fitness Walk and Talk Cardio. Rapid Time Fitness New Year's. Things like that. Those are the videos where I broke everything down to a T. Right now, I'm just telling you what I'm doing so you can get a better idea of my um, schedule. So my next meal, I'm not timing things. I'm going to eat when I'm hungry. I usually eat about four or five times a day um, to make sure I hit my protein synthesis, which occurs four or five times a day. Um, see my next meal probably gonna be around the same thing six to seven hundred calories um and the last meal is the one that i have to really uh pay attention to all right i got home in my last meals i'll be like i got how many calories left and a lot of people say don't eat before bed i usually end up eating before bed every day and still get six pack abs. A lot of people say that and they don't get no six pack abs. Because it's not about whether you ate before bed or not. It's because it's how many calories you ate that day. It's not about if you ate before bed or not. It's not about fasting. All right. Fasting messes a lot of people up. If you tend to binge when you break your fast, then maybe fasting ain't for you. Um, or you need to tweak it to another style of fasting. But most likely the case is fasting is not for you. All right. A lot of people mess up on their fast. A lot of people do crazy fast. They be fasting for weeks and they do all kinds of things like that. I'm not dissing nobody because I know a lot of people that do this. And a lot of people that do this are my friends. So I, I hate dissing diets and stuff like that because people take it personal and I get it. 
You know, I tell people I hate keto. Keto doesn't make no sense. Keto doesn't... Only time keto makes sense is right before um, a photo shoot or a bodybuilder show. If you're doing like a peep week. Or let's say you do a, a sport where you have to weigh in, things like that. And you want to get rid of that last little bit of water weight after you already cut all your body fat. That's the only time keto makes sense. Keto don't really make sense for the long haul. It doesn't. You know... And I, and I hate to say it, I'm just saying, I, I know a lot of people that I'm cool with that do keto. And they get offended. And I get it because, you know, your diet is personal. People take it personal and I get it. Because I take mine personal. You know, I feel a certain way when people diss what I be saying. But, <laughs> you know, and I, and I get cocky a little bit too. I ain't gonna lie, I get cocky a little bit. There's times where I get into the debate with some guy, right? I'm in the gym trying to work out my own business. And I get in a debate with some guy, and he'll be saying the opposite of what I'm saying. He'll be getting all crazy and stuff. I've taken my shirt off to show the results. No, no other stuff, no. To show the results. Like, where's yours? Take yours off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> getting all cocky and stuff, right? But I do that because it's personal, all right? Feelings get hurt when, 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 when people diss your way of doing things. When people diss my way of lifting weights, and I show them my 365 bench press, I'm like, "Where's yours? Where's your video at? You know, where, where is that?" <laughs> or I do a whole bunch of pull-ups. They talk about working out. I do a whole bunch of pull-ups, and I jump down to say, "Do one." Whether that's wrong or right, because I don't always feel right after thinking about it. In the moment, it feels good. But after thinking about I do this. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping it honest. I'm an honest guy. All right? I'm not saying I never lie because that would be a lie. Nobody in the world has ever just not lied. But I'm just saying, like, all right, I'm going to take you out through the rest of my day. All right? So I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat pretty much the same thing all day. But it might be different. I might substitute something for something. You know, I got fruit at home. I got things. I'm just counting. I'm going to count everything from start to finish. All right? Start to finish. And the end result is I'm going to be in a caloric deficit for a long enough time to get shredded. That's the key. It's not about trying to conquer the world in one day. You're not going to get abs in two weeks. You're not going to get abs in a day. You're not going to lose all your body fat in one day. You're rushing it. All right? And you're doing what I told people they do in the first place. They burn themselves out. You can also burn yourself out on a diet. All right? You got low energy. Calories are energy. You got to think about it. Calories are energy. If you cut your calories too low, too fast, you're, you're cutting your energy. You're cutting out all of your energy, all right? Your hormones are going to go down the trash. You're not going to be able to perform in the gym. You're not going to be able to perform anywhere else. So... And then when I go to bed, I'm going to wake up. Um, after I'm done with all my calories, go to bed, wake up, try to go to bed early enough to where I can wake up at like 1 o'clock in the morning. Um, it's my day off today and tomorrow. I'm going to try to make sure I can wake up at about 1 o'clock in the morning and get ready for the gym. All right? Get ready for the gym. Go to the gym at 2. 2 o'clock in the morning. Why? Does that make you work out better? No. Yes. To me, it does. Because not not because it's 2 o'clock in the morning. No. It's just that I'm not a people person. And I want to work out. You know what I'm saying? I want to. Nobody understands me when I'm saying this. Um, I'm telling you, when you get into the zone and you're working out, when you're at, not too long horn, but there's levels to this. When you reach a level where you're zoned out, you know exactly what you're doing. You know exactly what you're going in there for. You ain't got to worry. You ain't got to think. You ain't got to think of the next move. You know everything you're about to do. You got your stuff down packed. That's what level I'm on. I've been on that level for years, right? So for people who are not on that level, need to understand that there's levels. And when you reach that level, you ain't going to want to get interrupted either in the gym. People talking to you mid-set. That's terrible. And it's dangerous. Especially when you lifting heavy weights. The heavier the weight, the more you can get injured. 
period. You know, and you got beginners who will try to compare the light weights they're lifting to the heavy weights that somebody else is lifting. Um, and they say, I don't see the difference. Okay, if you bench pressing the 10 pound dumbbells and somebody else is bench pressing 110 pound dumbbells, the difference is 100 pounds in each hand. That's 200 pounds, as a matter of fact. When you see 110 pound dumbbells, it's not 110 pounds for the pair. It's 110 pounds each. That's only 220. I could bench press more now on the barbell. The barbell and the dumbbell is two different things. You're dealing with two whole different animals. That's just like the barbell and the Smith machine is two different things. I didn't know that as a beginner either. I'm not dissing. I didn't know that as a beginner. I used, I, when I first started lifting, I was dumb, I was bench pressing on the Smith machine and I had I had worked my way to almost three plates on each side, and I'm like, yeah, I'm stronger than this and that and third. And one dude was like, he bust my bubble. He was like, dog, you can't do that on a real bench. And I ain't know. At the time, I didn't know. And huh, I learned that day. I learned that th that day. This is years ago. And uh, I tried to put close to the same weight that I had on a on a Smith machine, which is still not the closest same weight. Most Smith machines, the barbell is in 45 pounds. So, I was benching maybe 275 on the Smith machine. Look like 275, right? And uh, I'm, I'm easing through that. Man, I put like 225 on a regular bench, and I couldn't budge. This is years ago. I've, I've done almost, I've done way more than that. You know what I'm saying? I've done almost 400 pounds now. You know what I'm saying? I've done almost 400 pounds on a bench press. I got videos of it. Don't say I didn't. All right? So, uh, you know, I'm going to get back to that. Though. I'm going to get back to working my way to that. I want a 400-pound bench press, but I don't want to be too bulky to do it. So that's that's part of my plan right now is to not bulk up really crazy. I want my strength. I want, I'm want i close to that 500-pound um, deadlift. Well, I'm back in my mid-fours. Um, I'm trying to get into my mid-fives um, somewhere next year. Um I'm not gonna rush it. I'm not. I'm gonna program. I'm gonna focus on my workouts, and I'm gonna plan. I'm gonna use a strict plan. How do I know how to do that? Because I've been working out for years. See, that's another thing, beginners. Not you. I don't know who watching me. I don't know you from a can of paint. But a lot of beginners don't understand that somebody like myself has hands-on experience. All right. Not bragging. Not boasting. I'm just saying, like, understand. We I mean, have that's one dang respect, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, somebody with hands-on experience that you see is... People will come up to me, and they see that I'm strong, and they see that I got muscles, and they want to learn from me, and then they just deny everything. I, that don't make sense, dog. Why you come to me in the first place? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you got to understand that, you know, I know what I'm doing. I've been knowing what I'm doing for a long time, right? All, all it is for me to do is execute the plan. But yeah, so I want that and I want my squat to get back decent, which that's going to take some work. My squat sucks. And I'm a, like I said, I'm an honest dude. My squat sucks. Not my form, not my depth. Um, I squat correctly. It's just the amount of weight that I can put. But yeah, I'm going to have to work on that because I've always been able to deadlift around the weight that I'm supposed to be able to squat. There's a few times in my lifting career that I was squatting, but I felt like I should have been squatting. But it's um, uh, it's it's a give or take. It's a um, uh, it's a use it or lose it type thing when it comes to lifting heavy weights. All right, if you go without a long time without lifting that that weight, that exercise, even if you've been doing things similar to that exercise, you're not gonna go back and do that same weight on that exercise. And if you do, you're going to injure yourself. All right, I know a dude. He was benching like five something. I, he was juicing. He wasn't natural. But he was benching like five something nevertheless, right? And the world flipped around, gyms closed, the whole situation we went in, y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, all the gyms around the country was closed. And he went back to the gym months later after not working out at all. And he tried to go back and work his way back to that 500 pound bench press. He worked his way back to that 400 and something pounds 
very quickly, like in weeks. Of course, he jumped back on his juice and his unnatural things. But he ended up tearing his rotator cuff. No, he tore his peg, then he tore his rotator cuff. He tore like three or four things back to back to back to back to back. And to this day, he don't lift heavy no more. Because he rushed it. He's scared to lift heavy now. And I'm pretty sure he still got some bangs and sprains. I'm pretty sure he still got pain. From those instances. And that was over a year ago now, I think. I don't I don't even know. That's a long time ago now. You're not going to heal up the next day. Alright? So to, to avoid injury at all costs. Safety first, alright? You gotta, you gotta hear my words, man. Stop waiting until New Year's. Because you can work through a lot of this stuff. You can work through a lot of mistakes. You can actually learn how to retract your scapula. You know, four points of contact on the bench press. 45 degree angle um, of your upper arm. Uh, bone on bone stack. Your uh, shoulder to wrist. Things that I teach you. I teach you. Watch Rapid Time Fitness how to bench press so you can see a visual of what I'm talking about. You know, how to arch your back and how to not over arch your back. Should you bench press with a flat back or an arch back? Or I teach all I teach all of that. All right? How to deadlift. The most I got a video titled The Most Important Deadlift Video on YouTube. And I wholeheartedly think it is. Because I've touched on things that most people don't touch on. They touch on some things. You know, but most people, most of these YouTubers ain't really teaching you nothing. They show you their Lamborghinis and their helicopters. They show you flash instead of fitness. They show you a little bit of fitness and then hit it with 99.9% of filler flash. The videos be entertaining. Oh, I had a great time watching that video, but you didn't learn what you came there for. My video is the exact opposite. You probably didn't crack a smile through anything I probably said. Maybe I said something that sounded funny. Maybe you like my accent. I don't know. But other than that, the, the facts. That's what I'm trying to give you. I'm trying to give you facts. That's going to stick to your ribs. And you're going to be able to implement immediately and get results. Not immediately. though. You're not going to immediately get, oh, he told me how to do it. So I'm going to go in there and lift. And I'm going to be strong as heck the next day. No, you're not. Most YouTubers ain't going to tell you that. It's not going to happen overnight, dog. Come like subscribe.